Hello everybody, Anthony is here, and in this video I'll be talking about how I created this whole sci-fi suit. There will be a time lapse in my commentary on top of it, but before I run it, I want to show how to use the Voxled tool on the mesh. It's a really, use, really easy technique that allows you quite a bit of creative freedom to design your own designs and to design concepts. And essentially you start with, well, Start with the mesh and have this particular 3D scan, which I've bought from 3D scan store. <clears throat> a really useful resource. I've probably spent like $100 here in the last couple of years buying stuff and studying anatomy and looking at the stuff and using it in my projects. This is a great base mesh to start doing this stuff on top of it. So let's just duplicate this because it's a little bit too dense and switch it. To voxels and probably down to 200,000 voxels. You need a fairly smooth bottom mesh, a base mesh, and I'll just go and smooth out some parts. And you can spend quite a bit of time just getting this stuff right so it doesn't show much of uh, skin bumps on your suit. It looks a little bit more natural and like you have some feelings in between. Well, you get the idea, right? And then let's essentially paint the um, use the box there. I usually turn this stuff to surface uh, base mesh just because when you turn voxels to surface you save quite a bit of uh, memory and it's just faster. Deal with, and you still have your box layer tool in, at, uh, on your left. Somewhere here, right in objects. Yep. Let's switch from perspective down to orthogonal and let's do a little bodysuit. Something fairly simple like. This. This. Maybe we want to modify a few parts. Let's control release that and we get that suit. We want to again modify a few other things. We've got quite a bit of freedom to add and um, change stuff around. So if I want to add just like that, it's pretty easy. Right. Then you need to copy the uh, tool options that I have on my left. You want to create it as a surface. Your land, not you don't want to use the auto work slice. It will just stall your computer forever. And you need to create a mesh that is fairly thick. If you create it that it's not thick, like this particular offset, and hit apply. And then you get, well, you get a surface that's looking pretty good and it's quite thin, right? It's like a nice right, surface. But if you want to do all the kind of splits and cuts, you need to convert it to voxels. And if you convert it to voxels, you'll get a whole bunch of features like this. It can be a cool design if you're looking for this particular look, but if you're not looking for this particular look, it, it can be a huge trouble. You either have to uh, turn it to voxels and put a voxel count to something like 3 million, which is a lot, and you'll still, you'll still have that stepped pattern on you. Or you need to create a mesh that's thicker. And let's do it again. Uh, so I'll put the layer set down to minus 5, and then I create the thickness with 7. So the surfaces will have the same thickness as 2, it'll just go deeper into the skin. I'll hit apply. Now we have this. And then if I hit and turn it to voxels at pretty low count, we get this pretty decent stuff. That we can then go and start spinning around and do voxel hide operations or whatever you want to do. Oh, 
Oh, lazy. I can tell kind of materials and see how they look on your design. Yeah, I wouldn't really. I don't think there's a design for any good at all, but you know. We'll see how I do mine in a second. Right, so let's just start the whole video, and uh, here we go. Alright, so I started with this particular scalp that's been slightly decimated down to about 700,000 voxels. It's really important to establish your symmetry, right? So what I've just done, I put the symmetry on the top, on the tip of the nose, and then did a symmetry copy across the whole thing. Uh, otherwise, <clears throat> with any scan you're dealing with, uh, unless it's been completely symmetrified, your scan is not going to be symmetrical. And you have to fix that, otherwise everything you're going to be doing, you'll run into trouble. Like I'm doing, adding this air, uh, stuff on top and I've essentially I've run into that trouble before that's why the first thing I decided to show in the video and start out with the video is by actually doing a symmetrical copy and if you missed it out you just can you know, scroll back and check it out right just uh, doing some stuff in and I'm doing <coughs> suit part by part so I'm not doing the whole body, I do not extrude the whole body out. I do, you know, I do the mask first, then I do the sleeves, then I do the body. You might be, you know, <clears throat> slightly puzzled by this approach. But I do that so it's easier to cut it then. If I have if I do the whole body and then try to cut out the sleeves, it's actually a bit tricky. So I decided just to cut the sleeves out first, then do an invert selection and cut the parts of the body that I need. And I just done that. I did an invert selection and I want to also deselect the head and I want to deselect the legs. To be honest, I should have uh, cut it at the bottom, not at the waist, looks better that way, but you know, anyway. Cut it at the waist and extrude it at, at the waistline. So when you're doing it that, that and one thing I've forgotten to mo mention is that uh, I smoothed the whole model a few times, you know, just to get a bit of a smoother look, because obviously whatever suit you have on top of you, it will, it's going to hide some of the details and wrinkles of your skin. So it's quite important to smooth the you know, body out. You can even just try, you can even try, go ahead and paint some wrinkles or smooth it even further and fill in the gaps that usually wouldn't be uh, visible in any kind of suit. In this particular case, this suit is really, really uh, skin tight, right? And it means that it looks almost like a wet suit. And I will be doing this uh, whole suit mostly in black scale and gray scale for the first uh, half an hour or so. And it's going to look like a wet suit, really. Especially with that mask on, on top of the head. That's why I kind of got rid of that mask in the end. Well, this I added a helmet on top, so it didn't look too much like a wet suit. Kind of early on, I decided to see some uh, thin patterns. Uh, and well, the cool thing about here, uh, this stuff right here is that uh, <clears throat> it quickly turns into a graphic design exercise, right? So I have these parts of the body that you can just cut and pull and pick a default material that suits you. And that default material will be applied to each mesh that you're going to create by cutting and splitting your mesh. And I'm using the split tool to cut it out. So I'm trying to show some skin, looking if it's a good idea or not. I'm using the Vox Hide here. 
Again, so, it's so nice and easy that you can see all this stuff immediately on your body um, in real time. You don't have to repaint your shading if you were doing it in Photoshop. So I'm trying to find the style here. I'm just doing these lines. It kind of looks sci-fi-ish. And by all means, you can drop it inside Photoshop, do like a um, screen grab of that, uh, drop it inside Photoshop and draw a few lines there if you find it faster. I think I would normally really do that if I were to do, to do a client work. I would probably do some kind of base mesh like that. And then I would play around in Photoshop and paint some stuff on top really basically, in a really basic way. Might be faster than using uh, voxels, and then after you create a few variations inside Photoshop, you can drop it back into uh, not drop it back, but we can repeat those ideas in here uh, quite easily and quite fast. Uh, I wanted to really change my challenge myself here inside 3D Code and do everything inside 3D Code. That's why you won't see me doing anything inside Photoshop. So I just added a zip line in front and zip line in the back. Also, I picked a black latex material for the body, so I changed the whole body. Uh, just because I, the body color it was a little bit distracting, so I just wanted to have like something underneath it that didn't have a body color, a skin color. The issue with the wax lace is that it does, it can get a little bit heavy. And right now, what I'm doing, I've just duplicated the body and I scaled it down, so you can see stuff through. And I actually created a little bit of a problem on the, in the armpits, that you can see some stuff show, shown through the armpits. I think I never fixed that really. Okay, this is a cool thing I'm doing right here. I'm trying to draw some kind of logo uh, on the body, straight on the body. I actually turned on, I turned off the symmetry, then I turned it off. And I decided maybe I could draw some kind of interesting sci-fi logo. Maybe she's uh, she belongs to some kind of military division that has some force, and they draw their insignias on top of the you know, chest. And again, it's super easy to do with walk slay, just draw that and add it on top. And here I've done that patch and then just decided to cut it using the walk height tool. And you can do a whole bunch of those patching one on top of another, just need to change the thickness of the mesh of the walk layer. You change it slightly here, you change it slightly there and play around with a whole, whole bunch of shapes and see whatever fits. Again, it's so cool that they can see it's in real time with all these complicated materials on top. I think these materials are looking way better than what you can get in ZBrush. Uh, here it looks much better, way more realistic. And I would say the final render in T-Shot. When I pick materials that are similar to this, looks probably about 75% correct, which if you compare it to a final render from a zebra skull, uh, it's probably like 40% correct. Um, zebra has got this tendency, uh, shows your details really well inside zebra, but when you expert the model, it doesn't shine, doesn't show the details that well in uh, standard renderers materials. Well, at least I found it for myself. Well, the 3D code is a bit more consistent. In terms of materials. Again, I'm just playing around with different materials and uh, applying a like, chrome, uh, latex, like shiny black, and all that stuff. And I'm trying to see if adding some little accents of orange could be great. I'm using orange just because it's a standard polymer there and that they can quickly apply. When you create this color scheme, when you have major colors and small accents, you can then quickly change them inside any other application when you have material assigned to them. 
it is a pity I cannot really change the materials here like I cannot modify the material that's been assigned across a whole model which is a bit, bit of a bum out to be honest and I'm just looking at the this kind of wetsuit right now without the body it looks pretty cool when I have this thing uh, skin looks quite captivating Again, certain stuff might be faster to do in Photoshop, I think. Uh, certain types of variations. And then you can do this. You can cut out a little accent. I had my depths on, and it's pretty common that I will have it. I would forget to turn off my depths. And I wouldn't cut through the whole thing. I'll do the opposite. Forget that it's not turned on and do the cut. Again, try to see some kind of patterns. Just dealing with super basic shapes here and just trying to get the overall feel of how it could look as a proper military attire. For well, the reference, when I was picking some reference to do the design, I was mostly looking at a kind of cat woman and a black panther, black panther, and they have this really cool. Uh, you know, I was just looking at this really black suit with minor accents for chrome and small colors here and there. And changing materials is quite a bit of fun. You can do, you can spend a lot of time doing it. Right, I'm doing some stuff on the sleeves, trying to figure out if I could go for kindish. The same some type of shape, or not? And overall, this is a fairly basic sculpt, fairly basic pain. Uh, I didn't go in like trying to model the whole suit out with all the seams and kind of embroideries that you you would get on a on a proper suit. And by the way, right now I'm doing a holster, so I was thinking about what kind of what cool stuff could I add to this body, and I decided to do this holster for equipment, for gun, for tools. It, it doesn't, it's not present in the final render, but uh, I, I decided to get rid of it later on. But it was fun exercise uh, because it's so easy to go there and just draw the shape that you want to see and then push it out. If you don't like it, you modify, you modify it and draw it again. So I wasn't liking I wasn't liking how it looked on the front of the side. So I decided to redo the whole thing. The reason I decided not to go along with the host it was kind of the idea that I didn't want to add too much stuff on it, on the suit, because once you start adding stuff here and then you add stuff there, you, you, I, I, you can start going on forever. And I do have, I do plan in future to do probably a male suit is going to be much, much more 
detailed and a bit more advanced than what I'm doing right here. Like proper, you know, crisis type suit. If I have time, if I get time. Maybe on an upgraded PC because voxels are quite powerful, they're quite slow, so I have to, I think I really need an upgrade from my system to handle a little bit more of them for like uh, high quality suits. So I did this holster, wasn't sure about the look. I mean, obviously, likes all the belts and buckles that you need to put on there. But you'll probably use a kit bash um, models to get it in. It's pretty easy to do inside. It's pretty cool. I don't think I'm showing it how to do it in this particular video. I think the last time I showed it, it was inside uh, actually a, co a tileable cobblestone. I was uh, introducing some rocks between cobblestone using the kid bash set i mean creating a little rock uh, become uh, my little kid bash thing i thought introduce those stuff in using a primitive tool it's quite a fun way pretty cool I'm fighting around with the holster, trying to see what I can do to improve it, because I didn't like the um, thickness of the front part. Yeah, I essentially dropped the holster because it really, it really looks a bit empty. You have to add some props on top of it. You have to add a, like, a holder for at least uh, something that resembles a tool, a gun, or radio, communicator. And I did not decide not to do it. Essentially, this was the kind of similar reason I didn't do the gloves. I did the boots. I didn't do the gloves because the gloves so uh, and they are really complex. Like the amount of, you can probably spend the amount, the same amount of time doing the whole suit. Like half of that amount, you can spend on doing the gloves. And here I'm demonstrating some cool stuff where you can think about a shape that you want to add, like a padding on your shoulders, and then you just, you know, extrude it out, and you have your padding, which you can then modify as much as you want. So I already have these shoulder pads that are looking pretty decent, you know. So you can keep on going trying to modify them. I, I do think I, I got rid of them in the end, like with the holster. But man, it's quite a fun way to do stuff when you can add these significant details just by painting them and extruding all that stuff out. Trying to shape the pads just using the standard Vox height. I definitely didn't like the look of it in front. They look uh, don't look natural. It wouldn't be built like that in real life. So I'm cutting them out right now. And still, they don't really look that fantastic. I think right now I'm just I'm spoiling the way they looked before. When I just extruded them, they looked pretty good. Then I decided to modify them, and the modifications didn't look that good. So, I 
kind of led me to dropping them all together. I just decided not to spend too much time modifying them. All right, so I think I probably had a break and I just turned them. <clears throat> Maybe I didn't record for a few minutes and now I decided to do the boots. Quite fun with the boots, so you get this funny big foot thing so that you can then go and smooth out. I'm trying to be quite conservative about the voxel count, but when you have a mesh with a small thickness and you send it from the surface to voxels, and you, for example, just put like 500,000 voxels there, you do run into these issues which you just might have seen. It becomes really like a stepped ladder stain, it becomes looking, gets looking a bit strange. So I had to extrude a thicker boot and um, extract a thicker boot and uh, do with that later. Do with it later. Just trying to shape it to look right. I have something that looks a little bit like a, like a boat. Well, usually, I mean, a hundred percent times you would uh, even in entertainment. Either in movies or in games, they always put on hills. So I have really flat soils here. I uh, just you know, didn't want to spend time modifying the foot, just rotating them in place, moving them in place. And I was like, all right, I'll just go with the flat soils for now. It doesn't matter that much for me. It doesn't matter that much for the tutorial. But just a thing to think about that you would normally would want to, to rotate the feet down a little bit so they would look more like uh, so you can put a boot on a hill okay so i just decided to go and try to do the gloves and after i've destroyed the gloves i just realized how much effort i'll need to spend doing the gloves it's just ridiculous honestly that stuff boots and well, boots not that bad but gloves are just incredibly time consuming it's something that you need to specify in a time budget to separately right just doing some random cuts on these leaves trying to play around with materials and i'll get back to the shoes later Playing around with the materials, it's always quite a bit of fun. <laughs> you want to do something like this particular suit design but you don't want you don't like the look of it it might look like a wet suit i'll suggest adding some armor padding here and there like i've just created with that shoulder padding you can do some knee padding uh, hip padding uh, um, uh, you can search for the reference for different like sci-fi female suit you'll see stuff people use again here i only just uh, gun for the suit with the helmet I, and I didn't really want to do a helmet originally I was like nah don't want that
in experimenting with the shapes around the you know hips and legs. Did a cut of the uh, of them up front. I decided to carry on with this shape up to the top. Again, playing with the materials, and now I'm trying to unhide. You can see my layer panels, uh, layer, layer palette, box tree is a little bit messy. I didn't really name anything correctly. It's kind of a personal project. Uh, until it gets super messy, I won't really deal with it. If it gets... A, well, the, one of the reasons when I start naming, even if I'm doing the personal project, right, a big reason is that it, the computer can slow down quite a bit, it can slow down significantly, significantly. So then I need to start hiding parts, right? So I'm hiding parts here and hiding parts there. And to know what I'm hiding, like that I'm, to know that I'm hiding the lower part of the body, I will need to name everything there. I will need to name all the lower body parts, uh, and the boots and all that stuff. So it's going to be really easy to deal with that. And to do that, I will use a renaming script that I personally written. You can find it in my, my one of my videos, so free, uh, good to go. Just check it out, it's a really easy script to do, uh, to apply. And you can apply, you can rename a lot of layers inside the file, it's definitely recommended. All right, you can see me just trying uh, different designs, and that's a bit more what I liked in the end. I'm going with that, uh, like, uh, Top white and whole body black look, which I thought it was more or less original. It's a bit hard to be really original here, but you know. Something quite you know, that was appealing to me, that's what I'd have done. Just uh, adding some elements to the boat, seeing what I can do. And again, I really hope that I'll get some time in the future. For me, doing this suit is just a warm up. Some fun shapes that you put them together, but not really, nothing really serious. So hopefully in the future I'll get some time to do a really proper, powerful sci-fi suit with a lot of that stuff uh, on top of it. Because I think using this technique, combine it with a bit more sculpting or wrinkles, sculpting the clothing on top of it is great. So obviously you can see that, well, I don't have any marvelous design, I don't have any clothing right here, so uh, mixing this kind of stuff, you can mix it greatly. Imagine if you have this rubber top, it's like a wetsuit top with some marvelous designer pants that go down to heavy boots. It could be 
quite really quite fun uh, and the sci-fi look that's you know utilizing all the latest stuff you use uh, 3d code box layer stuff you also use marvelous designer and you create stuff on top of each other that will look just fantastic so this is some of my ideas again maybe i could do that in the future maybe not like i was thinking like no, three, using some 3D scan gloves so it can not be too bothered with the gloves. Some 3D scan boots, maybe ideally. Maybe even doing some boots on my own, you know, like 3D scanning them on my own, finding certain type of boots in the shop, just making, making a bunch of photos of it. I can see that in... And then trying to put it inside uh, the project. So right now I'm doing a helmet. I'm doing the glasses and the helmet, so I'm just preparing the base mesh to do the Vox extrude. And for that, I need just uh, I need to obviously to smooth the whole thing out, and then I paint on top of the glasses, which is rather cool, I think. Probably one of the funnest props I did on the on the whole body with these just these glasses. They they're so easy to do and so effective. The reason I decided to do gloves is just because I don't have any eyes really, I just a 3D scan mesh, and I didn't want to introduce any eyes, I didn't want to bother with the eyes, so I decided, okay, I'll just put some gla um, glasses on, and I'll probably do that in the future with any 3D scan I'm gonna be working with, this if it's uh, again, not something production relevant, just some tutorial stuff. Again, looking for the shapes to go around. One thing I kind of disregarded and that uh, created a little trouble in the future is that you, you need to make the glass thin. I'm using a split tool right here just to, uh, trying to get some stuff out. But it, what I was talk talking about, you need to get the glass thin. If it's too thick, it doesn't render correctly. That, that won't look that much like glasses and one of the things it didn't look correctly on the render that I'm showcasing in the thumbnail image is that if you look closely enough you will see that the, the glasses are intersecting with the skin of the mesh and in that particular point of intersection they go black well they look they look like they're part of the skin right so that, and that, that's not correct so you need to make uh, glasses that are less thick, uh, thick, uh, less thick, but again, if you're doing something really fast, I'd probably do about it. I'm pretty sure you haven't noticed it on the render uh, yourself. You would only notice by if I point it out and say, okay, that, that's the temples. These glasses don't look right because they're intersecting with the skin because they're way too thick. I was thinking, thinking if I could get away with the bald head, but in the end, I was there's no way I could. So this mask still looks like a wetsuit mask. So uh, I decided that I gotta do the freaking freaking helmet. It's honestly again super easy. That's it. It's done. Just tweak it here and there. And no, so easy. Probably going to be a bigger helmet in real life, considering there is some hair inside, so I could have made it a bit larger. But if she uh, if she got some, if she really got a bald hair and some custom made helmet, it could probably be sitting like that. Again, always a fun to go and use a workshop height to cut through some surfaces and seeing how the sh uh, the planes uh, shine. 
when you cut like a top, cut some sides and stuff. And here I'm just I wanted to finish the uh, suit as soon as possible, so I'm just doing some really basic splits, whatever comes to mind, really fast. I didn't have enough density on the helmet, so I decided that's why I had to undo all the splits that I've done. And that's why I decided to do a different split. I was like, yeah, okay, it's good enough. Probably should last longer. I should go through the whole head down to the bottom. It kind of stops abruptly at the middle of the back. And it shouldn't have. But again, doing it fast and dirty. A lot of different materials. So having too much black, I thought it was making it look uh, making it look quite evil, like some dominatrix, tricks, dominant tricks type of a character. It's uh, Star Wars bad type. And now here I'm just adding the headphones. Again, super easy, so fast. You already you get a decent shape to work with, you know, in, in seconds. Doing some splits. Again, I did some detailing and it didn't go right, so I had to redo it. I think I still haven't done the boot soil, so I'll probably go back to that and fix it. Every now and then I do forget to record for a few minutes, or think it's recording, but it doesn't. And that's why you can, you can get a jump here and there. But usually, I, I think in this video, I haven't seen any, any strange jumps. And usually, I'm pretty consistent with the recording. I had a recording that just, uh, for two, I don't I did not record for longer than 20 minutes because something can go wrong. I don't want to record more than 20 minutes. And then, one recording that lasted for like 50 minutes of forgotten about it, it actually got corrupted and it was horrible. I like lost a whole hour. I actually had to upload it to a website called restore.media and pay for the restoration because I found some free options that didn't work out correctly. Okay, I'm right, right now I'm doing the boot uh, soils and you could have seen it. I've just essentially duplicated the boot, cut out all the top parts and then uh, I decided to add that, that, that stuff. I really didn't want to spend much time on the boot, so I just left it at, th at this particular stage. And I was like, whatever, it's good enough. And yeah, going back to that lost recording, so I got a corrupted recording. 
I tried to restore it myself, probably spent like an hour using different software stuff that's now for free. And then I used this restored media website where I uploaded it and they did fix it, though I had to pay like eight American dollars to download it. So if you put a price in money for this particular tutorial, it was eight American dollars. And my time is priceless, but eight American dollars were really spent on this tutorial. Just thinking what kind of small stuff I could add. Like the boat. To be honest, now when I look at it, how I was doing the whole suit, I think one of the things I could have done, which would have been better, I could have done like uh, do the whole body walk slay and then do a whole bunch of cuts and spend maybe like 20 to 30 minutes per one suit and then do another one, do another one, do another one, maybe Maybe spending even less than that, maybe spending just like 15, 10 to 15 minutes to build one suit and it's doable. You still get a clean stuff. And then you'll have a collection of them that you can play around and see what kind of shapes work better what, and what kind of shapes don't work at all. And that's a good amount of practice. Generally, the more you do, the better. It's Like, uh, well, I remember I was reading about this experiment where people, some artists were divided into groups. One were doing one thing for a long time and others, others were doing a whole bunch of iterations. And the people, designers who were doing a whole bunch of iterations, they produced a better result in the end, opposite to the people who were doing a long, long thing. So quite often doing a whole bunch of iterations is much more resultive than doing one thing for a long time and I think it's applicable to anybody like if you're a long time professional or that's why people do some thumbnails you do like you can do 15 thumbnails in Photoshop and pick the few that you like then you carry on with those and then you get a final result here I was kind of started out and finished it uh, you, you could say uh, I did some experimentation by shapes, but I still think that I spent too much time thinking and such that I could have been a bit more brave and just go there and cut, 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 cut here and then that's okay, this, this one is done, cut, 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 this one is done. It's probably because again it's a recording, so I feel a little bit more restrained when I record stuff, I, I'm like thinking I gotta do this stuff right. Uh, and uh, it doesn't help, it doesn't help at all. Here I'm inside Keyshot and Keyshot, if you've never used it, it's really simple software. And right now I'm just, uh, I've applied a whole bunch of simple materials uh, to, to it. And you can, now you can see I have all these minor color accents that I can play around and see whatever is better. I'm also using some um, library of the HDRIs that's uh, in the environment tab that you can play around and see how your suit looks in different lighting. Right now, obviously, the character looks really small, you know, st standing on this kind of floor. It looks like it should look like uh, 10 centimeter high character, which is tiny. So uh, I think I did use this HDRI map, but I just uh, decided to hide the environment and I decided to render against uh, sky, lifting the lifting the camera up and looking the looking at the sky. So I don't get the environment that can confuse you. Yeah, it's pretty cool that you can just play around with so many materials. And imagine you have uh, like five of them all done quickly in 10 to 20 minutes, and then you can just assign all these materials and present to a client if you do it for a client or in the studio. 
or just for yourself as a training practice. Oh, well, that is pretty cool. Pretty cool experiment. So I'm trying to change the scale of the environment so the, the human figure looks a little bit more like so proper scale. And here I'm duplicating the same figure, you know, rotating it and putting it on the right side so I can look at both of them at the same time. We are, we are nearing the end here, so probably like a half a minute left. Uh, just some material management right here. We are applying stuff. Trying different HDRI images. That's about it guys, so thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video. I hope you found it useful.